question of the week. Where does that go? It's obviously had a piece of rubber or sponge or something. It's got a split pin through it. Or rivet. That looks like a 5 16 bolt hole. And I really don't know where it goes. I've not got a clue. We'll ask the internet and see what they say. Yeah. So if you can tell us what you've done since the last time we saw you and what you're doing today. Um, painted the engine. Of the Mini? Yep, sorry, Mini engine. Um, I've missed ordering the two bushes that go in here either side, so I couldn't put all the front suspension in properly. So I rebuilt the knuckles, all new brake pads, shoes, rebuilt the calipers, painted everything, painted the engine up, new water pump, and got the engine in basically with all the ancillaries. I've got a few more bits I've got to put on it. Um, probably have to take the distributor out to get it in the car properly because you don't want to damage anything. I've put that on there loosely, but that's the wrong one. Shouldn't have the temperature sender there because it's got one there. You pleased? Yeah, it's come out well, apart from me damaging that, which I'll there and there, I'll have to respray that. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, all good. Then just <coughs> make it all the back sub fine. New brake lines, new brake rubbers, new handbrake cables. Finally worked out where that went, that's the fuel pump mount, so I've got to drill them out to take that. And it's almost ready to go back into the car then? Pretty much, yeah. So this is assembly of the brake drum. Yeah, rear back, brake back plate, shoes and drum. So is there anything you need to be mindful of when putting these sort of things together? Um, not on this part as such. I'll put it all together with copper slip. Which is uh, anti-seize grease. Got to make sure that they're straight. You just do that by eye. Yeah, it hasn't, it hasn't got to be accurate at all. What I'll do is I'll whip this drum off and you can see what one looks like because I can't remember which way up the shoes and springs go. Oh, that's the truth. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's being built upside down. You build them upside down because you've got all that slack in the arm. So it hangs too low as such. So if I build it upside down and just keeps it all steady right and now I can see which way around it all goes <coughs> right that's copper slip anti-seize compound it's a grease but it's got I think it's like well obviously copper might be a bit of graphite in there I'm not sure see that is like pyramid shaped oh yeah they've got flats on them when you slide your cam in I hit on that. Like that. And as you wind that adjuster out, it pushes your brake shoes out that way. Okay. So that's your brake adjustment. You just want to make sure it's nice and lubed up, you know? She cried. Right, so you've got our brake shoes. So that goes that side and the square edge goes that side like that. So I know that they'll be in the right place. See so that's hitting on the high spot so you want a little bit of copper slip on there. You don't want a lot, just enough to lube it you know. And there, a little bit on the ends of those. If it's a car that you're maintaining like every every other brake shoe change, or brake pad set change, put new shims or springs in as well. So you've got two different springs. Is that just a part that wears particularly They quickly? just get weak, get rust in them, brakes get hot, get cold, you know, they're always changing temperature as such. They're like probably 20p each or something stupid, mm. so you might as well do it, you know. Right, that's your handbrake actuating arm. And that sits in there. When you pull your handbrake lever, it spreads them, spreads the pads. So you want a bit of lube on that. 
that goes in there like that in there like that so that goes to the top so you want to get your spring which is this one it will go in with the spring at the top the bar of the spring you see that way round or that way round and then your bars at the bottom so you want that in there like that yeah okay and that hooks in there on that one and that goes in there and that's it and then we'll wiggle that one there without doing that because you've got to get that through the hole stupid set up basically so what most brake shoes have is pick up one and say that hole there yeah okay there'll be a hole in the back of the back plate that, that pin goes through comes through that hole there yeah then you have one of them sits on the inside of the shoe yeah then you have a spring sits in the cup and you have one of them pushes on and just twists around to lock and that would hold your brake shoe in there to stop it moving out. Okay. Yeah. But minis don't have them. Don't ask me why. Why don't they? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. I think some of the later ones might have. Right, so we've got to get our bottom spring in. Uh, that went on the inside, I believe. Yeah. So we've got to hook him in there. Centralise them up if you can, roughly. They all seal still nice and soft, but I checked those earlier so I know I don't need them. I generally don't paint these because they get warm and cool down and the paint comes off. And it just clogs your brakes up more. And what part is this? That's your rear hub, the bit that makes it spin. That bit there. That... So okay. your, your wheel bearings are in there. Of course, it's got no drive because it's front wheel drive, so it's just a plain couple of bearings. Give her a bit of grease. Let's do that back one because you can get the, uh, the grease into the front one and the cap when it goes on. Something to tap that on with. Well, that'll be enough to get the nut on. Grease in there. Make sure the bearing's got enough in it. That washer there, it's got a slight recess in there. Slight counter sunk, that just goes on that way because the end of the shaft's got a slight taper. And that spring is hitting on that, you hear it? Mm. See that mark? Grating noise. It's just marked it there on the inside. So there's me thinking that spring went that way up, it doesn't, it goes the other way up. And then it won't hit that. So of course now the hub's on it, makes it really awkward. Because <laughs> I don't want to pull the hub back off. I was going to say something, but I thought, yeah, yeah, I thought it's, were, yeah, it's just not my place, is it? So you can turn that spring without taking all that out, do you reckon? I will certainly try. So, if you decided, sod it, I'm just going to leave it, what would happen? Eventually it'll wear through the spring and then you've got no top spring. Okay. And that would be not good. And repercussions of not having a top spring would be what? Um, probably just the brakes to just bind up and lock on. Okay. So if you're thinking of cutting corners? Don't go there. Right, so we want to go with that that way round so the spring's at the top. Right, that's that one in. Right, I'll have to take it off. Doesn't hit now. That sounds better. <laughs> where we started from now. What you normally do on wheel bearings is just nip them up and then take them back to your nearest slot hole. What do you mean? On a castellated nut there's slots in here through the stub axle. 
Oh, there's one. Yeah. And there should be another one about there going that way. I think. Yeah, there you go. There's one there. So we know we're on that plane there and that plane there. And that feels good there. So if we can pick up a slot hole there, we're all good. It's a grease cap. Probably got enough grease in there, so you don't want to go nuts with it. And that just bangs on there. Got it. Right, it's all good. Yeah, it's special spanner. It's just got square holes in it. Okay. And that fits on your adjuster there. Anyway, get your drum on. I don't know, that hole. We've got no play in the wheel bearing, I feel that. So then we start adjusting up. Basically it'll spread the bottom shoes till they touch evenly, then you pull your handbrake, spread the tops, and that's that's it basically on a mini, there's nothing technical about it. Yeah, see that'll centralise the top part. So you just keep going, keep adjusting them up. You can lock them up really hard, rock hard, and then back them off. See that spanner? You know I said it had like a castellation, it had like flats on mm. the dome. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So you feel that, that's, that's tight. It'll click round, donk, that's into the slot. So I want to go a bit tighter, maybe another couple. Right, that's locked up solid. So you back it off one at a time. That's probably a bit too much. Take it off one more. That's fine. Because then once it's been run in for a bit, then you adjust them back up again. Okay. Because nothing's ever dead square in there. You know what I mean? It's old brake drums, new shoes, you have to let them bed in, what they call bedding in. Yeah. Right, that's on all four. It's just to stop dirt and rubbish entering it, you know. Right, that's so all I do at the moment is I'll just cable tie that to that for the moment because I've got to find some clevis pins which I've got. These I never put in until you've got your handbrake cables connected up to the front of the car. And then you can, because otherwise they'll just fall out all the time. You're just okay. wasting your time, you know. That's your dome nut, chokes the pipe. Right. So obviously that's your suspension travel there, so you don't want that hitting anything. So, we'll just play around with it when it's on the car. I can just jack it up and down then and see if it's going to hit anything, you know. But that's ballpark, that's good enough. I've got, got enough length on that. If that's a little bit too long, I can cut that down. Same as that one. Well, that one's a little bit shorter, but I can bend that one further round. So it doesn't really matter as long as it doesn't hit anything. Which we can try, like I say, when it all goes back together. Next week on The Workshop.